Okay, you're wanting to uh, look back at the um, first order equations because we've been in high order equations for a while. And of course, you're going to be tested over first order equations. Um, yeah, one thing you can, of course, do is go back and you know, just scan through the videos. Um, but I'll give you a quick synopsis here. Uh, and, and in first order equations, you really have a, just a handful of things that you can check. Now, I'm probably going to forget something, so I'll go back to the table of contents and look at it and see what I might have not mentioned. But the first thing is just first order equations, uh, homogeneous, non homogeneous. Um, and that's the equation of the prime, y, dot, y prime plus p of x, y equals zero or equals some q of x. Um, if it's homogeneous, uh, you just do e to the integral of whatever is in front of the y term. Um, and that's e to the capital P of x, uh, d, uh, e to the capital P of x, uh, going to be your solution where capital P is the integral of your lowercase p. Uh, and so you kind of remember that. Um, if, did I say either the capital P, it would be either the negative, the integral of the uh, lower p. Uh, if it's non-homogeneous, then you use an integrating factor to get it into the form differential of this side equals this side so you can integrate. And the integrating factor, the thing you multiply both sides by, to put it in that form is uh, just your e to the p of x, not e to the negative p of x, capital P of x. And that's kind of the way you remember it, but you want to remember why it works and how it works, or at least be able to verify that it works. Okay, then you have exact equations. I think maybe n dx plus m dy equals zero. Uh, if that equation is the differential of some function equal to zero, then your solution is that function is equal to a constant. And there's your arbitrary constant. Uh, and that's gonna be the case because your n is the x derivative of that function and your m is the y derivative of that function, uh, it's gonna turn out that then the y derivative of your n function, the function in front of your dx, has to equal the x derivative of your m function, which is the partial with respect to y. Uh, so you have equal mixed partials and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, but it's a simple test. And if you can, you know, if, if the equation passes the test, uh, then you just have to integrate your m and n functions and reconcile the constants. Um, remembering that the constant when you're integrating with respect to x is a function of y. And the constant when you're integrating with respect to y is a function of x. Uh, that's exact equations. Um, then you have equations you can do by substitution, most notably the Bernoulli equation, which is like a first order equation, except that on the right hand side, you have some function times a power of your y function. Um, and you assume a solution of the form uh, y to the m. Uh, and you run through some steps, or you remember that the, uh, the power you're looking for is one minus m, uh, or one minus n, uh, where n's the power of y that appears in your right-hand side. Um, and then the equation becomes linear in your new variable, v equals y to the one minus m. Uh, you work that out, and then you work back to your, to your y function. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as long as you do the integrals that are involved. Um, and you have other substitutions like where your uh, right-hand side is a function of a linear function. Um, uh, fairly straightforward substitutions. Um, so what else was done there because there's more uh, you have homogeneous equations. Um, and we'll talk about this. It's like a function's homogeneous if when you 
substitute TX and TY, uh, your, your T's kind of cancel out. And that gives you a substitution that you can use. Um, don't want to say too much about that. That kind of has to be written down. Want to make sure I write it down correctly too. Um, so I'm going to just switch over to WebAssign and look at the table of contents for chapter two and see what's not immediately occurring to me just to save a little time. Uh, yeah, well, that's pretty much it. I don't think, oh yeah, separable equations, which is obvious. Um, and where you just can separate your equation into dy over some function of y equals a dx over some function of x, integrate both sides. And then if you have a initial value problem, uh, reconcile your constants. Um, and those equations are simply your, like your population model, your radioactive decay. Um, one, I, well, no, you know, I, I'm thinking that the logistic equation occurs in a different section, but it really ought to occur in the section on separable equations because the logistic equation is separable. And of course, you got to know that. <coughs> Then you have numerical methods, which just goes back to what we did right at the beginning of the course. I still don't know why they save it for section 2.6, and I really don't know why they put it into a bunch of formulas uh, when it's so obvious. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about as much of that as we can. Uh, but of course, you got the videos. You can go back and look at them, too. Uh, OK, and what I just said, is there anything it strikes you as the first thing you'd like to look at. Um, not particularly. I mean, I've, as you were talking about all of the different things, my memory started to clear back up, but I'm sure there are details that I've missed in most of them, so. Well, my purpose in talking about it was to start jogging your memory, so, and I, I, I pretty much knew that was gonna happen. Um, so I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily think that with every class I teach. Uh, but uh, in your case, I certainly would. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna pause the recording for a second. I'm, I'm using a backup camera because I never know what's gonna happen to the quality of the videos that I get through Zoom. For your class, they've always, I think, been pretty good. Uh, for other classes, they get really blurry and they don't show that way on my screen. So it's either my ISP or it's Zoom or some combination thereof. But I've got a good camcorder and I think I might've used it last time, uh, but either way, I've got that aimed at the board. The disadvantage of the camcorder is I gotta wait for my either, and I don't know if it's my ISP or if it's YouTube, but it takes forever to upload anything in the middle of the day. So I might upload a couple of gigabytes between now and seven o'clock. And then between seven o'clock and eight o'clock, I might upload 19 gigabytes. Uh, if I knew it was my ISP, I'd start yelling at him or something. Uh, now yelling doesn't work. So even though I'm inclined to do so, I don't. But uh, uh, make sure I, make my point regardless. Okay, um, so I'm gonna turn the video camera on. And it's the recorder. Okay, uh, so that's all right. Uh, don't really wanna put my complaints about Zoom or the ISP and I don't know which it is or YouTube. Uh, in a video, but since I don't know who's guilty, I just know somebody is. Um, okay, so that linear equation, we can dispose of that pretty quickly. It's of the form y prime plus p of x y equals zero. This is non homogeneous, this is homogeneous.
And the way I like to annotate it is the, this is a lowercase p, this is the uppercase p. Um, the uppercase p of x is the integral of lowercase p of x And the key there is just so that y prime equals negative p prime of x e to the negative px, p of x. Okay. And that equals negative little p of x e to the negative big p of x. And of course, this is little p of x times e to the negative big P of x. So you have the negative of little p of x multiplied by the e to the, the exponential uh, plus the positive P of x, okay? And it works out, it's, it's, it's almost automatic. So I'm not gonna say any more about that, that's pretty easy. And then, Um, not sure what they use over here. I'm going to use Q of X because that's often used. Okay, Y prime plus P of X, Y equals little Q of X. Your integrating factor is E to the capital P of X. Then, You end up with this. So that this side is the differential of I think I'm writing this correctly. Okay, now why is this side the differential of this? The differential of e to the p of x, y is just by the product rule, the differential, the derivative of e to the p of x times y plus y prime e to the capital P of X. Yeah, I think it's gonna work out. And it equals this side, we don't worry about that. So I take the derivative of this, I get P prime E to the P of X, Y plus e to the p of x y prime equals this. And p prime is just little p of x. So I get e to the capital P of x y prime plus little p of x times e to the capital P of X, Y. And this is just this, okay? So 
this is the differential. So now that works out. You want to verify that when you do it by running through these steps just to make sure you've got it right. But once you've got that, you can just kind of say, okay, we don't need that anymore. All we have is this. If the differential of e to the p of x, y, and we're talking about the differential with respect to x, uh, equals this, then e to the capital P of x, y is the integral of e to the capital P of x, q of x. You're going to get an integration constant over here. If you can perform this integral, and you often can, then y equal I'll put a dx in there. Equals this, where again, this is going to be an integral with an integration constant. The integration constant allows you to match an initial condition or a given condition. And the integral just gives you some function. It'll often be a function that's easily divided by this one. And uh, that's how it works out. So this is what you want to remember, just that you're going to multiply by e to the capital P of x. And that's going to change the left-hand side into a differential. So you can integrate both sides and get your solution. Don't forget your integration constant. OK, I don't want to take the time to work through the details of an example. Because uh, we all have limited time, I don't think that's going to be to your advantage. Um, and we worked through a number of examples early in the semester if you need them. Okay. And you probably don't even need to go back to earlier videos. Uh, you probably get plenty of examples from your book, Google, whatever. Um, and I, I don't see that you have any serious problems with mechanics of doing the integrals and stuff. No more problems than most people would. Okay, so you want to be able to do your integration. And of course, you're going to need to show the integration on the test because um, you need to show the details. So I know you're not getting it from Wolf or Alpha or something. Um, even though I trust you, as I've said, uh, that, that, that's got to be the standard in any course where you can't proctor your tests. Okay, uh, so that's linear equations. And that's really pretty much what there is to it. Now, of course, you have things like interpretation and um, you know, just the calculation details. I don't have time to go through a lot of calculation details here. Okay, now the next thing that's kind of logically follows is exact. And then if equation, if an equation looks just really terrible, Okay, you, you don't see anything. It's not separable. Uh, it's not linear, not first order linear. Uh, it's something bizarre. Uh, <laughs> this is often your last recourse. Um, and you just cross your fingers and hope this thing turns out to be exact, as it does in a lot of really important situations. Okay, exact equations. form is df equals zero, but it's going to be disguised. That's disguised, not disgusted. Now, you might be disgusted. The equation doesn't have emotions. OK, I don't think so anyway. Form is this. Well, df equals zero means fx dx plus fy dy equals zero. And we write that as, I don't know if we use m or n here. I never can remember, but we're going to write it. I think it might be m. And I think I have a little better than a 50-50 chance on that, because I always want to call this m, and uh, I'm often wrong. Okay, 
ndx plus mdy equals zero. Now the equation might not be in this form. You might have some dx's over here and some dy's over there on the other side. You may, might even have a dy dx plus some awful function, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but you have to be able to, of course, do the algebra to put it in this form. Uh, but I think if you just realize that that's what you need to do, you're not gonna have any trouble doing it. So we have ndx plus mdy equals zero where, where obviously n is going to be your fx and m is going to be your fy, okay? If n y equals mx, then there exists an f of x, y, such that n equals fx, M equals F lowercase y. That's actually an if and only if statement, but I wrote it down this way because that's what you really need to know. Okay. And I'm not really writing this as rigorously as I'd like. And this is because NY is FXY and MX is FYX, and they have to be the same. FXY and FYX are the same. You know that uh, from multivariable calculus. Um, so that's your test. And now the task is to recover your form F. So I can say, Thus, F is the integral of NY with respect to X, which is equal to the integral of MX with respect to Y. Now, The integral, and look, that doesn't feel right. Let's see. NY equals FXY. So if I integrate NY with respect to Y, I should get fx, and that should be n it's easy to get myself turned around. I'm just making sure that I haven't done so. Um, and it's important to make this connection, which is really straightforward and trivial. And something's just going haywire here. So let's make sure. Uh, And it's certainly not so. Because if n equals fx, then f is going to be the integral of f with respect to x, and m is going to be the integral of and sorry, f is going to be the integral of n with respect to x. I think that's what I said. And m is going to be the integral of m with respect to y, okay? So we got integral of nx dx with 
this integration constant. I'll call it g of y. Since you're integrating with respect to x, your integration constant, well, any function of y is constant with respect to x. So you're going to get this function. And the integral of m y with respect to y has integration constant h of y, uh, h of x. And g of y has to equal h of x. Well, those are your conditions. If you write out the general constant here, g of y, you need this because this integral might give you a function of y that doesn't appear when you do this integral. Okay, similarly, this integral might give you some function of x that doesn't appear when you do uh, this integral. I, I said that wrong, but you can figure it out, okay? This reconciles um, Y functions that appear in the integral of my dx. Now, in general, when you integrate m, my dy, okay, in the integral of my dy, and you know, the one thing that I'm finding that my Zoom videos do is they really exaggerate smudges, so I try to avoid them, usually unsuccessfully. Okay, again, this integral can, so M is gonna be a function of X and Y. So in general, when you do this integral, you expect to get some things that involve X terms and Y terms, and some things that just maybe only involve Y terms. Those Y terms, are not going to appear in this interval. That's why you have to have the g of y up here. And we're not going into more detail because I don't have any more board space. And x functions. Don't have room to write that appear in, but from the integral of nx dx. So, you know, I recommend in preparing for the exam that you work a few of these, review your work on some of them. I hope you've been writing out your work um, on, on, on the web assignment homework. Um, so, you know, look back at some videos. You can just flip through them, sort of, and, and find what you're looking for. Um, but if you understand this statement in terms of a couple of examples, then that kind of locks in the whole process. Okay, well, that's exact equations. Um, you have separable equations, and I'm not going to do too much with separable equations. Look, uh, my red chalk. Just a minor tragedy. Uh, those pieces look like they're functional, so that's going to be okay. As long as I don't step on them and grind them into the floor. Uh, maybe I'll move them over a little bit. There we go. Okay, separable equations. Typically, it's going to be a dy over f of y equals 
uh, f of x dx. Okay. Uh, and that means the equation is like the form y prime equals f of x g of y. And I don't want to use f for both functions. So then let's deal with the smudge here. Um, takes a little bit to smooth these things out. So there's a little smudge. Okay. So you just integrate both sides. Et cetera. Okay. Um, don't want to say too much about this, but one important equation uh, that's separable. Well, okay. I'm just going to do just state a few examples because most of the examples are really straightforward. So, one example is y prime equals ky. Okay, that's like your population model, the rate at which your population changes is some multiple of your population. So natural log of the absolute value of y equals kx. This could be a plus k or a minus k, depending on whether the population is increasing or decreasing. It also applies to financial models. You know, if you, if you have uh, certain rate of interest uh, or a certain appreciation or depreciation of your principal at a constant rate or at a rate that you predict to be maybe constant based on history or whatever. Uh, how do you have these things? Okay, so you get natural log of y equals this. So that y equals some multiple of e to the plus or minus kx. And it's not a plus or minus. It's either a plus or it's a minus all the way through. Um, and I'll, I'll remind you that you know a is arbitrary, um, and we don't need to say any more about that. So that's one of your standard types of equations. You have to inter interpret it in a given situation, but it's usually pretty straightforward. This is a pretty straightforward. Um, situation. Uh, and radioactive decay is another uh, example. And the, you know, you'd have a minus in front of your k. Or your k would itself be a negative number. Um, so that's something that I, I think is pretty easy. Now, another separable equation is like y prime equals k y times 1 minus y or L minus Y, if you wish. That's a logistic equation. And you get dy over Y times L minus Y equals KY. And you got to apply partial fractions. And then you got to do some algebra okay then you got a solution and the solution curves the possible solution curves uh, have this characteristic. Okay. 
can we approach this limit in a way that can be analyzed with slope diagrams and so forth. It's an autonomous equation and um, you wanna use those techniques, which we went over in some detail. Okay, I don't have time to, I wanna take the time uh, to go over those, but it's something you wanna review. Uh, And that's maybe all I'm going to say about separable equations. The process is always the same. It doesn't always lead to an exponential solution, obviously. Uh, there are other, other possibilities, but these are a couple of the more prevalent, more important, more commonly encountered cases. Okay. I think we've got a little more board space. Actually, we've got two spaces there. Okay. Um, Bernoulli equations. Just like a linear equation. Okay, right now, that's a non-homogeneous linear equation. You use your integrating factor and so forth. But now you put this y to the end there. And now it's not. What you do is you let v equal y to the m. And you determine m. such that the equation becomes linear in the variable v. Okay. Um, spoiler alert. This occurs if m equals one minus n. I advocate so that you understand better the change of variable process uh, that you not immediately go to the spoiler here and the things that come away from the spoiler, but work through the details. So you see that this does occur. Um, we work through the details. I'm pretty sure we work through the details. I always do. Uh, and I always mess it up at one point. Do you think I'd understand the laws of exponents by now? And I do, but I get careless. Um, so yeah, there, there, there's some pitfalls there, some algebra pitfalls that uh, I certainly shouldn't be making at this point. Um, but I seem to usually do. I think I might have worked through it correctly this time. Um, and I don't cheat by working it out in advance. That's no fun. Uh, okay. So uh, anyhow, a fairly straightforward process. Uh, you let V equal Y to the M. So that V prime is M Y to the M minus one DX. Okay. Um, or V prime is M Y to the M minus one. Uh, so that you solve that for Y and it's gonna be one over M minus one root of V uh, and substitute that in for Y and so forth. Um, Substitute that in for y prime, substitute uh, y to the, substitute v to the one over m for y and work it out. Uh, anyhow, that all, that all works. Um, so then you just change variables, which is what I just, change variables, and the change of variables is that uh, y equals 
to the one over M. Uh, Z, I better write it down, equals Y to the M minus one. Uh, B prime equals M Y to the M minus one Y prime. I think I tried to say that a minute ago, and left something out, but there it is. So, Y prime equals V prime over M Y to the M minus one. But of course, Y is Sorry, V is Y to the M. Uh, so that Y is V to the one over M. So this Y to the M minus one is write it out carefully. And there's where I always screw up because I'm careless. Uh, in, in doing these exponents, but this is going to be V to the M minus one over M. Bring it up into the numerator. It's V to the M over M minus one. Work out the details. If you're working out the details. Uh, and magically, The R and I haven't worked it out, so I'm not 100% sure that we end up with M equal one minus N. So you want to check me out on that. Okay, so I'm just kind of circle that and circle. This, I'm 99% sure of that. But, uh, my level of certainty is exponentially decreasing with age. So uh, double check. Um, okay, well, that's your Bernoulli equation. Um, other substitutions. Um, and I'm actually going to cheat just a little bit. There, there's one that I'm not thinking of. Okay, don't want to write that one out. Um, you can look up the homogeneous equation, but uh, and I'm, I'm just looking for notation here. Uh, Let me, uh, they're using the M and N notation here, so I don't want to confuse you by using a different notation. They use the M on the DX and the N on the DY. Uh, pretty sure that one reason I get confused about that is some authors do it one way and some the other, but maybe I'm just confused. Okay. And uh, either, either way, it's okay. Okay. But if you have, okay, homogeneous. of degree, we're supposed to be degree, 
and I have no idea where the H came from. Hopefully I won't smudge too bad. I've always used N for the degree. Your book uses alpha. And move again. Ah, shucks. Sorry. Okay, M of TX, TY gives you an expression that you can factor a T to the alpha, out of which you can factor a T to the alpha, leaving no more Ts within the function. That's what it amounts to. Um, then, This function is homogeneous of degree alpha if and only if M and N both homogeneous of degree alpha, in which case, let me make sure I write it down right. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, The change of variables u equals x over y, v equals y over x makes the equation separable. Okay, well, that's your homogeneous equation. You also have the linear equation. Uh, which we addressed. Uh, if your function is, if you have like a y prime equals f of a linear function, uh, then you have a straightforward conversion. Let me just find that and put this in the, well, I don't see it. Seems jumping around on me. Initial value problem, and that's the end. Well, anyhow, it's y equals f of some linear function. Okay. Uh, then you just let u equal the linear function and it becomes uh, tractable. Okay. I don't see the notation your book uses, but that's pretty much an overview of your first order equations, except for your numerical method, which is just your simple Euler method. And I'll review that because it's important also for understanding your existence there, okay? And maybe a you know, quick mention of that. So if you have y prime equals f of x, y, y of a equals b, and you can't solve this. None of your methods work. Okay, and there are plenty of equations where nothing is going to work. Okay, uh, if this isn't integrable, you're probably out of luck. 
um, in, 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 in a certain sense. Okay, and that gets a little deeper than we want to go, a little deeper than I want to go. Um, I can't characterize what's integral and what isn't. Um, not sure it can even be done. Okay, so you put the picture of this in the plane and you have your point A, B. And we could call that, if you want, x naught, y naught. You calculate the slope here. If this gives you a way to always calculate the slope. Okay, so first of all, Okay. This allows us to calculate the slope at any point. And now, now it tells me I got 61 minutes of camera left. Okay. Okay. Get a little nervous. Don't want to lose that just in case this is messed up on Zoom. Anyhow, that allows us to calculate the slope at any point. So we can calculate the slope. So we calculate the slope and we draw a little line segment. I'm going to draw a big line segment, but you, can, you, you, you want to think in terms of a tiny one. Um, you calculate the slope. You know, use X not Y not. I could use A and B, but I'll use X not Y not. Um, and you then specify some increment H. Now, when you first use this thing, H is always going to be the same, but there are a lot of cases where the, just the behavior of the slope uh, dictates that some places you want to want to use a smaller value of H. Some cases you can get away with a bigger value. Right now, I'll just say you got some H, and we'll just use the same H everywhere. Um, then what you get is you get a rise A delta y equals the slope multiplied by h, which is of course f of x naught y naught times h, giving you a new point. Looking for a good color to use. You know, I better start my last piece of purple chalk here. Okay, and that gives you the point here. We'll call x1, y1. And it should be clear from the geometry here that Your x1, y1 is this. Now, this is a formula you can use mindlessly without even seeing what goes on here. Okay. I don't recommend that the formula be used mindlessly. And of course, if I ask you a question about this uh, on the exam, I, I want to see mind. Okay. I don't want to see mindless application of a formula, which I think is so unnecessary for any competent student who's doing this. 
The formula is not that hard to remember, but it's much easier to just understand this picture and apply it. And then it becomes obvious Then x2, y2 is going to do the same thing from the point x1, y1. Okay, and you could draw the picture here, and we did the picture in, in quite a bit of detail. And this is what's going to result. I'm not going to explain it. And then in general, xn plus one, yn plus one equals xn plus h, yn plus f of xn, yn times h. And then you can move on as far as you want. Now, as you move through this process, you have I'm going to try my wrench off here. Oh, excuse me. The floor's a long ways away. Standing so long. Okay. I threw that without injury, so I'm good. As you go through this process, you tend to have accumulating errors. And it's in analyzing these errors and the values of H that you need to get a reasonably accurate solution, whatever reasonably accurate might be in any given case. Uh, you want to keep these errors within bounds. Uh, you can also um, is that I haven't used here. There ought to be another one. I'll just do it in red. Just a couple of other notes. So you start getting a handle on these errors, uh, which increase uh, uh, along with the slopes. The greater the, or the second derivative, the greater uh, the rate of change of your slope, uh, the more error you make by assuming the slope is constant from here to here. And that's what you're assuming every time you do this. Uh, you minimize that error by making H small enough, but the smaller you make H, the more error you get, uh, the, the uh, more computation you need. Um, and that extends to astrophysical simulations, simulations of emergent properties in magnetic fields. And I talk like I know, well, I, I do kind of know how those things are. Uh, are approached, uh, but the details, um, not so specialist in those. I'm not even a good amateur in those areas. Okay, okay, anyhow, you compare your solutions with actual exact solutions. possible. And that's kind of problem you can sort of expect where I kind of probe for a little bit of insight into the process. Means you, you know, a lot of times they give you an equation that you can easily solve, but ask you to do this approximation and see how the approximation deviates from the exact solution. Uh, that's very important because uh, in some areas, the equations that you get are never solvable or very seldom solvable, but they're very important. Okay, so you can do that. Another thing is that 
a solution can't cross a point. Where solution is not defined, perhaps because it doesn't exist, perhaps because the function f of x, y no longer applies to your situation past a certain point. Uh, so, and this is key to some of your existence theorems, okay, uh, where your general function can't be solved if any of the coefficient functions are undefined. Um, it can only be solved within an interval where your coefficient functions are defined. Well, that's kind of the end of what I hope to say, and it's kind of uh, just a few seconds from the official end of class time. Not that I'm in a hurry, but I know you've got a schedule. So uh, I'm going to cut it off there. Uh, do you have any questions on any of that or anything else you'd like me to address? I would be willing to make you, you know, additional videos on specific questions or specific areas. Uh, I don't think so. That was super helpful, though. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's an overview. So refine yeah. it. You know, make sure you can get down to the, the details that actually apply when you get your hands on a problem. Okay. Okay. So if that's it, if there's nothing else, I'll let you go. But uh, I'm All not right. a hurry. So give everybody my regards. I will. And I've got a few April Fool's pranks that I, I got the ball rolling right before I left, and I want to see if they've come to fruition yet. So, <laughs> fill me in next time. I'd be interested to see I will. Uh, how some of the reactions are, especially if they apply to some of the people I know. Um, yeah. But either way, either way. Uh, okay. Uh, well, have a good rest of your day, Richard. You too. Bye. Bye.